Hello guys. Welcome to my channel. Hope you like it and enjoy it. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. Saeed Mohammed Abdullahi Hassan 1856-1920 was a Somali religious and military leader of the Dervish movement, which led a two-decade-long confrontation with various colonial empires including the British, Italians, and Abyssinians. Due to his successful completion of the Hajj to Mecca, his complete memorization of the Quran and his purported descent from the Islamic prophet Muhammad, his name is sometimes prelude with honorifics such as Haji, Hafiz or Sayyid. Sayyid Muhammad Abdal Hassan was born to a Bakali Geri mother and Ogadain father. Due to his influence in the precipitation of Somali nationalism, the Central Powers, contemporary fanciers sometimes refer to him as the father of Somali nationalism. In 1917, the Ottoman Empire referred to Hassan as the Emir of the Somali. According to Douglas Jardine, the name Mad Mullah did not originate with the British or the Italians as is often thought, but is a translation of the Somali expression Wadad Val, the Mullah, that is a lunatic, used by Somalis in Berbera. One Somali poet at the time, Ali Jama Habil composed a poem titled Maxim Val, Muhammad the Lunatic. According to apologist said Sheikh Samatar the Somali word Wallen covers a spectrum that ranges from sheer lunacy through lunatic valor to an otherworldly inner serenity. In Berbera the established Kateriya Tariqa would soon be challenged by a new Tariqa. The most prominent Sheikh of the Salahiya order were Ismail Ibn Ishak Alarwani and the Dervish Amir Hassan, called Mullah by British, who arrived in Berbera in 1895 and constructed his own mosque and began propagating. He was strongly against cot and chewing tobacco, both of which the Kateria had permitted. Amongst other disputes, he would come to debate the leading Kateria sheikhs of Berbera including Agaz and Zaji Ibrahim Zersi. Sheikh Matter, the leader of Somali Kateria, was invited to participate in 1897, and after rigorous discussion, the Kateria Tariqa had proved victorious and Muhammad Abdullah Hassan had been refuted. British authorities took note of the disturbance and turmoil, and he was thus expelled from the city. The divisions were deep and both sides had accused the other of heresy, Hassan would go on to form the Dervish movement based on Salahiyya just two years after the debates partly in rebuke of the Kateriya status quo. In March 1899, one Diwali Hersey a former member of the Somali Aden police then Mr. Percy Cox's, former council resident of Zila and Berbera, 1893-1895, expedition guide in Somalia allegedly stole a rifle and sold it to the Tariqa at Cobb Fardad. The vice counsel at the coast, Harry Edward Spiller Cordo, sent a letter to the mullahs at Cobb Fardad demanding the return of the rifle. The letter was carried by a, Som a Somali-mounted policeman named Ahmed Adan. Upon his return after the delivery of the letter, Cordo interviewed Adan, who provided the following information. I knew many of the people there some of them were relations of mine. My brother-in-law, Dula Arab, was there. I asked them if they had any rifles, they said they at first had only six, but had just received 55 from Hafon. I saw two or three of the new lot, they are Martin's new. They told me they had one or two 14-shot rifles. I saw some mullahs walking about with Snyders. The sheikh himself and some of his mullahs used to practice daily shooting at a target, they put up a shield against a tree. I used to talk with people every day. We talked about many things, some of the words they said were good and others were bad. They called me a kafir and laughed at my uniform, saying that I smelt, and asking me why I wore the Sirkar's clothes. There were hundreds of people there, some from every tribe, Dalba Hanta, Habertal Jala, and Habra Yunus. What is particularly revealing about Ahmed Aden's interview is the confusion that was caused by another letter carried by a Somali, supposedly also from the British administration at the coast. This second letter angered the mullahs at the Tariqa. 
On the third day the mullah sent for me. I had seen him before, he often used to come into the house. I went to him, and he said he would give me his reply to the letter I had brought, that he had just received another letter which had been brought by a Somali. He asked me about it, but I told him I knew nothing about it, and asked him who had brought it. He said, a Somali. A man named Salon had come in that day. I thought that he must have brought the letter. He then gave me a letter. It was written on the back of the letter I had brought him. I saw the government stamp on it. He, the sheik, said, this is the reply, the reply to your letter. I will give you the answer to the other letter tomorrow. He said that the second letter contained bad words. Next morning he gave me two letters, and I then went away, and got into Berbera on Saturday night. The second letter provoked the mullahs, the hostile tone in the reply is due to the offensive second letter carried by Salam the Somali. Both replies, one regarding the rifle Kurt, but relatively inoffensive, and a second addressing the confusing insolent second letter are in the British record. The Dervish War The news that sparked the Dervish Rebellion and the 21-year disturbance according to the Consul General James Hayes Sadler was either spread or concocted by Sultan Nur of the Haber Yunus. The incident in question was that of a group of Somali children that were converted to Christianity and adopted by the French Catholic Mission at Berbera in 1899. Whether Sultan Nur experienced the incident firsthand or whether he was told of it is not clear, but what is known is that he propagated the incident in the Tariqa at Cobb Fardad in June 1899. In one of his letters to Sultan Diria in 1899, Syed Hassan said that the British have destroyed our religion and made our children their children alluding to Sultan Nur's incident with the Roman French mission at Berbera. The dervishes soon emerged as an opposition of the Christian activities, defending their version of Islam against the Christian mission. Risala Lil Bimal, Letter to the Bimal There are only one people during the dervish struggle the Sayyid extensively asked in a letter to join his struggle. Those were the Bimal clan. His letter to the Bimal was documented as the most extended exposition of his mind as a Muslim thinker and religious figure. The letter is till this day still preserved. It is said that the Bimal thanks to their size being numerically powerful, traditionally and religiously devoted fierce warriors and having possession of much resources have intrigued Muhammad Abdul Hassan. But not only that the Bimal themselves mounted an extensive and major resistance against the Italians, especially in the first decade of the 19th century. The Italians carried many expeditions against the powerful Bimal to try and pacify them. Because of this the Bimal had all the reason to join the dervish struggle and by doing so to win their support over the Sayyid wrote a detailed theological statement to put forward to the Bimal tribe who dominated the strategic Banadir port of Mirka and its surroundings. One of the Italian's greatest fears was the spread of dervishism, had come to mean revolt, in the south and the strong Bimal tribe of Banadir whom already were at war with the Italians, while not following the religious message or adhering to the views of Muhammad Abdul Hassan, understood greatly his goal and political tactics. The dervishes in this case were engaged in supplying arms to the Baimal. The Italians wanted to bring in an end to the Baimal revolt and at all cost prevent a Bimal dervish alliance, which lead them, them to use the forces of Abia and the Mijertine as prevention. Ethiopia, Britain and Italy. However, soon angered by his autocratic rule, Hassan Hirsi Dalla Iljek, a Muhammad Subur chieftain, plotted to kill him. The news of the plot leaked to Hassan. He escaped but his maternal uncle, Abbas, was killed. Some weeks later, Muhammad Subur sent a peace delegation of 32 men to Hassan, but he had all the members of the delegation arrested and killed. Shocked by this, Muhammad Subur sought the help of the Ethiopians and the dervish withdrew to Nugal. Towards the end of 1900, Ethiopian Emperor Menelik proposed a joint action with the British against the dervish. 
Accordingly, British Lieutenant Colonel Eric John Eagle Swain assembled a force of 1,500 Somali soldiers led by 21 European officers and started from Bukko on May 22, 1901, while an Ethiopian army of 15,000 soldiers started from Harar to join the British forces intent on crushing the 20,000 dervish fighters, of whom 40% were cavalry. Thanks for watching please subscribe my channel. Don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel for more history.